Tim Huckabee, and welcome to the User Community Virtual Series. Today, our special guest is my buddy, David Kelly. David, thanks so much for coming. It's my pleasure to be here. All right, so you are at Wirestone, awesome design firm. Thank you. You are the principal user experience architect. That's right. What does that entail? Well, I like to look at it as kind of the chief Kool-Aid drinker, but... Uh, <laughs> Excellent. You know, it's it's really about getting designers and developers uh, to kind of work together. Um, a lot of times, it's it's laying out the architecture, and it's it's really about making things cool that people like to touch and interact with. And that's exactly why we're going to talk about the ad control today, which is a way to monetize the cool stuff. That is. So when you have a great idea as a developer, using the ad control is a great way for the average developer to actually monetize those those cool things that they make uh, and get into the marketplace and make some money. And it's, it's, it's easy to use. Outstanding. Why don't you show us how easy it is to use? Well, let me show you right here. So the first thing you want to do is go get an account uh, with the Ad Center, and then you pull their SDK, and I add this DLL. Uh, Right-click, add a reference. Uh, you find it there. And after you find the reference here, you're good to go. Um, now, actually getting into your application, you need to, to add a namespace. Usually, I use uh, advert, and then uh, you select that namespace, uh, which is you know, Microsoft Advertising Mobile UI, and, and then the assembly. And then uh, you're able to, uh, to put that ad control and set whatever properties you need to and get it going. Um, there is something you need to go out and define uh, an ad unit and an application ID, and you'll get that from using the Ad Center, and they'll kind of walk you through it, and it, it'll let you, uh, you know, target your your app or the ads in your app to whoever your de demographic is. In context. In in context, right. right. So I have this app called Princess Paper Dolls. Right. So you know, uh, seeing as that's like little seven-year-old girls, like my my daughter. Uh, you know, I don't want to put car ads in there, right? So you use use that information to kind of target around the type of user that uses your apps. So you just put that information here with the application ID and your ad unit ID, and uh, uh, for the most part, you're ready to go. Um, you can hit compile, get it to run, and and we should be able to get an ad here coming up. And I've prepared this demo so we can uh, people can download it and play with okay. how it works. Great. And uh, it, it's really simple code. And in this case, we're not getting an ad, but... Uh, but let's pretend like we yes, are. Yes, let's <laughs> pretend like we're, we are. Because norm normally it works as long as the phone has connectivity. And most people's phones have connectivity. There's actually some tricks you can do, though, when you lose connectivity. One of the things I do in, in my apps is when the ad control fails, you have something behind it, like a secondary ad, like, uh, like I have a picture of some other app that I've done. And so if that fails, people are exposed to some other app that I have, and maybe they'll go do that. So that way, if you're not making money, at least you're driving traffic to other stuff that you've done in the marketplace. And with, when, let me restate, when you say fail, you, you may have a criteria by which the context doesn't deliver an ad. It's That's not like right. It's, a it's not like an exception. Right. There's a, it's, it's just when the ad control makes that request, it doesn't get a response fast enough, or there's too much network travel, whatever the reason is. Or there may not be an ad in context, right? Maybe. Right. Maybe. Uh, so in that case, the ad, ad control automatically kind of removes itself from the visual tree, right? And, and then puts that ad behind there, and then you can, you, you have, you, if you put that ad behind there, then you get something out of it, right? Because if you're delivering these apps as free, you know, if you're not doing something with that ad space, you're not you're you're losing out, right? And you have that trick in the source code you're providing. In the source, yes, I have that. It's really easy to do. You just put a little uh, just this image, the same size as the ads, and typically it's uh, uh, you know four four eighty by eighty uh, is the typical ad that you use in a phone seven application, and um, you just have your image sitting right behind that, that it's at the same resolution. And uh, then you put an event handler on it, and uh, like in my case. Uh, I can actually show that code. So I, I use this uh, a function called present tactile feedback because I'm into tactile feedback. A lot of users I find are interested in that. But but the main code here is is when someone clicks that secondary ad, it's just uh, creating a marketplace task and pointing them out to the other app so they can now check out the other app. Outstanding. Hey. So. Um, 
Thank you so much for providing this type of guidance to the community out here. I really appreciate it. It's my pleasure. It's a lot of fun. And thank you guys for watching.